welcome to another edition of Making Mythica. Today's focus is on composition over coolness. If you're like me, you probably got into comics because of some cool piece of art that you saw in a comic book. Perhaps it was the cover, but a lot of the stuff on the inside that really grabs us and says, oh, that's cool, I want more, is those big, cool splash pages. But what a lot of people fail to recognize is that all the pay panels that lead up to that splash page make that splash page what it is. It makes it powerful and interesting. Also, that cool drawn splash page or that cool drawn cover, particularly the stuff inside the book, is a means to an end. It is, as was stated in the book Framed Ink, it is the vehicle that gets us through the story, not the end itself. So in other words, you want to make sure that it's not just about the pretty pictures, but about the story. I'm sure almost all of us can relate to a story or perhaps even a movie that had really great looking visuals, but didn't really have any sort of substance or story. <coughs> Michael Bay. But this happens in comics all the time as well, because an artist can draw really amazing stuff, but they have no idea how to compose shots, build up tension, any of those kinds of things. And that's not something that is taught um, as often as how to draw Spider-Man or how to draw a cool, a cool image. What I want to share with you today is what I think about in terms of composition as I'm making a page and some of the tools that I use to create mood, create atmosphere, and more importantly, bring your eye to the areas of focus that I want you to see. So let's get started. So first, let me ask you a question. Have you ever seen a movie or a fight sequence in a movie where the camera is way too close and it's shaking around and you can see blurry things moving around, but you can't really tell what's going on. That's an example of bad composition and bad, you know, camera movements and not and not backing out so that the reader and the viewer can, can see what's going on. I see this a lot in comic book art as well, where an artist will zoom in on something before we've been given an introduction to where that something is attached to or where it came from. Try to remember the phrase, clarity is key. Before we go any farther, I want to highlight the elements that make up a piece of art. Most of you have heard of these before um, as the elements of art. And they are line, shape, form, texture, space, color. If you look at any piece of art, uh, you should be able to identify uh, one or some or all of those elements. So I want to go over this page panel by panel and show you what I'm thinking about compositionally with each panel layout, as well as how I'm utilizing line, shape, form, texture. Um, I'm not using color yet, but how I'm utilizing those different tools to help my composition. Okay, so in this first panel, we see obviously a lot of lines. Um, we can see those going on just everywhere. Um, and then what are the shapes? Okay, the first shape that we see here, make sure I'm in a new layer. Yep. The first shape that we see here is the shape of this character, this woman walking with the cloak. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and uh, fill that in. Okay. The second shape that's really prominent here is the shape of this bird in the foreground. Okay. Let me quickly draw that and fill that in. Okay. So there's our two primary shapes. Now, right away, you can look at these two shapes and you can tell that this is a shape of a bird and this is a shape of a person in a cloak. Maybe you can't tell that it's a woman or a man, but you can certainly tell that it's a person in a cloak. And it's important that we be able to read those shapes. Now this brings me to a, another question I would ask you. Have you ever experienced 
seeing someone from across the street or in a crowded room from behind, you don't even see their face, but you know somehow who it is. And sometimes you even get the opportunity to get up close and talk to them and realize not only do you know who it is, but it's a person that you haven't seen in a really long time, but somehow you recognize them from their shape from behind. And the reason for that is, is that our brains are wired to be able to uh, remember details from the outside in. So the first thing that we remember are big details like the, the overall shape or silhouette of a character. Uh, and then secondly, something big identifying feature like maybe the color of their hair. But you're going to start to forget details a lot sooner than you will those big uh, important memorable things like the color of their hair or the, the sh their shape. Uh, you might start to forget what what eye color they have long before you forget the shape of their form. And so in concept art we use the same principle. You want to create a powerful silhouette so it's instantly recognizable even when uh, we only get to see it in the silhouette form. Uh, Darth Vader is a great example of that. You can recognize that character in silhouette even if he was teeny tiny. Okay, so you want to have these strong, readable shapes that people can easily identify. How much detail that you end up putting into this bird or this character after that is not nearly as important as dialing in an easily recognizable sheep because if they can see that it's a bird that's all that matters now something else to keep in mind about that is right now there are two distinct shapes uh, i wanted to be sure that those shapes don't intersect each other and create an uh, unusual shape so if i did this Now I have a very, very unusual shape here that doesn't quite work uh, as being easily readable. Um, you could probably still pull it off, but it's just not easily understood. So that would be another lesson is you, you want to make sure that anything that's important on the page or in the panel is not obscured by other things. Let me undo that a little bit. Something else that's happening here with uh, intention is these diagonal lines that are being used for panels. Now, I see a lot of people use diagonal lines for panels just whenever and wherever that, that it strikes them. Um, but ideally, you want to use them for purpose. So when we think of straight vertical lines, uh, or straight horizontal lines, we think of something that is very structured and orderly. But as those lines begin to shift and uh, get diagonal, they become unstable. This, these two red lines look like that they are falling over, okay? And so that becomes a, an uneasy feeling. That, that's not stable, that's unstable. So that's reason number one that they're being used, because we want to create this unstable environment. Reason number two that they're being used is that, as I just illustrated, these feel and flow in an over and down motion. So it's helping with the flow and composition of the panels as well. So again, these are being chosen with purpose. All right, um, so once we get the forms in place or the shapes in place, then the next thing is to use lines and shadow for form and texture and for contrast. So like I said, I'm using a lot of uh, black here to help uh, really separate it from the ground and the, and the background. But I'm also utilizing you know, a lot of texture and as I come up and around towards this side, uh, the texture is getting lighter and lighter. You can see all of this is in white. 
Um, and that gives me the sense of form. Um, so you can tell just by the texture and the lines that are on here that this uh, bird has a form uh, that's something like this, right? And, and you can kind of see that form taking place because of the way that things are textured and shadowed, right? So I'm just using lines and shadow for form, to, to, to depict form and for uh, some texture. But the secondary use that it's for is for separating contrast. So um, I have an area on the ground that's pretty light and devoid of uh, too much dark and too much texture so that this character will pop, okay? Then when I come down here, I be I'm, I'm tried to make sure and use as much uh, kind of black as I could so that that character would stand out strong. Um, I kind of build that up a little bit with some cast shadow on the ground. Okay, so there's nice, nice strong um, form here, nice strong shape. And notice how I tried not to get anything that was too busy or you know in the way of the shape around the background because that could make it a little bit unclear and confusing. So I save those details for other places, uh, you know, back here and the wall and the window and all stuff like that, okay? So moving on to the next one, um, again, I'm focused on the composition of the page. And the shapes of this um, are kind of the key factor here on this one. This is obviously primarily focused on the, the woman's shape right here. Okay, notice how, again, very clear, the background is left white so that it's contrast. I might use, you know, a gradient of color or something back there. Um, then up here we have another shape and um, it's kind of lost in silhouette. That's okay. Because in this particular case, we want a shape there, we want a line, but we want our brains to deliberately say, I can't tell what that is because it's it's a reveal. We don't want to reveal what it is yet. Um, but on this wall here, I put in a big uh, black silhouette to kind of help change the shape, uh, giving me a, a shape, something, you know, like this and just something visually interesting. And then I throw, use lines to create a little bit of texture and give you a little bit more indication of, of what it is. Um, and then it's good to go. Um, now, something that's not on here yet that is an added part of the storytelling is that um, the sound effects. So on this panel here, there is a bird saying, call, right? And this kind of gives you a... Uh, a forewarning of danger. That's kind of the whole point of this this bird being here and that sound effect, right? So we read that first, then we see the character. Both of these also, something else I forgot to mention, are leading our eye in this direction towards the next panel. Um, then on this page, uh, we are going to hear sort of a, a gurgling, uh, uh, sound effect, uh, kind of a choking gurgle, right? And it's gonna go something about right there. And that draws our attention. We, we see that sound effect first. We wanna, we wanna see it first and then move over here to the reaction. And that's very important in storytelling. Uh, again, something I see all uh, too often done wrong is that you need the reader to see things in the order that you will have the most impact. So in this particular case, we want to see that sound effect right here uh, and, and see it and then respond to it in the same way that the, the character does. So first the sound effect right here, then we see that the character is distant from that sound effect. Uh, and then we come in close on the expression and reaction to that sound effect, okay? Um, so again, coming down to this third panel, we get this close-up of this worried face. And uh, again, it's kind of 
framed in silhouette. This, the darkness is engulfing it, uh, making it feel a little bit more moody. Uh, I'm utilizing the um, cowl or over her head to try and you know create more shadows um, because all these are helping to build that mood. Um, but the main thing is when you get into these things is really understanding where to leave enough uh, shadow or enough light that it is still recognizable. Um, a good example of that is the eye. Um, I made sure that the eye shape uh, was still strong in that it was showing, uh, you know, that worried shape, right? Because the eyebrows are sort of uh, concealed by shadow. So the eyes themselves have got to do a lot of the work. So I need to make sure that that shape is correct. Um, then when it comes down to the mouth, a lot of times when I'm drawing a character, especially a female character, I will draw a, a pair of lips all filled in. And then um, maybe a smile. Right, you get something like this. But that only works well if there is teeth there. If you suddenly uh, fill in the, the mouth area with darkness as well, then it blends in to the lip. So at that point, I will be very mindful to not fill in all of the top lip so that it still reads well as a lip shape. And that's really what you're after when you're when you're trying to make think sure that things read is is it a strong and easy to read shape this do people recognize what it is and this is the thing that I, I keep telling people um that I see a lot is that you know, they'll call for a close up like um some hand reaches and grabs a device or a hand is about to grab a hold of something or throw something and it's too zoomed in for one so we don't always know what we're looking at and that's the equivalent of watching a fight sequence that is too shaky and too close you can't actually see the movement okay all right i don't want to spend too much time on these videos i want to keep them down to a nice uh bite size chunk so i think i'm going to stop here and I'll continue on into the next video talking about how um, the environment can become a character in itself and help tell the story along with the characters. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it helpful. I do enjoy making these videos for you, but they do take a little bit of time and energy. So if you enjoy this video, please be sure and like it. Hit, leave a comment down below if you'd like to see any specific uh, type of video being made and please feel free to subscribe to the youtube channel if you'd like to see more videos and once again thank you to all the patrons who support me on patreon because that's truly how i'm able to get these videos made and if you'd like to be a patron please feel free to check it out at www.patreon.com forward slash action studios thanks so much and have a great day